This is supercharging a Pontiac 301. Supercharger is from a Jaguar, uh, a 2009 or earlier Jaguar with a 4.2 liter engine. I'm gonna put it on this Pontiac 301. And as you can see, I got a plate there now, which I got mounted to the supercharger. That way I have a way to mount the supercharger down to the lower intake. I still need to uh, drill some holes in which I'm going to uh, pull the two plates together. The top one is aluminum. The lower one I'll show you in a moment is iron, which I'm gonna weld to the lower intake manifold, which the, this intake manifold is actually from a Pontiac 301 turbo engine, of course, I'm not putting a turbo on here, I'm putting a supercharger, but I noticed that intake manifold was easier to use for this uh, particular application, and it also flows better, along with some porting I did onto the intake manifold, I'll show you that in just a moment. The belt tensioner is from a uh, an LS1, like a, let's say, a, a 98 Camaro with a 5.7 engine. This would be the same kind of tensioner that's used on on that engine that I just happened to find best for this uh, set. Of course, the pulley is not to the tensioner. This is a wider pulley so that it'll accept the eight rib belt. This is a Dorman uh, power stream pump pulley. What is that? 300-339 in case you need a eight rib pulley that'll fit a GM power stream pump. The alternator, of course, is not original. That's from a Chevy pickup, like a 93-ish. Chevy pickup, which, uh, and of course all these brackets on here are custom, and, uh, you know, I had to push everything as far back as I could so that the supercharger would at least go over the intake, so I pushed everything as far as I could, which necessitated, necessitated me using custom brackets, not the original Pontiac brackets, and so, none of these pulleys are original, this is actually from a Chevy. This is actually a Pontiac pulley, the V-belt part. The inner part, and I know it's hard to see, there's eight rib. This is from a Ford Lightning quick change pulley, not original, quick change. I did remove the thermostat housing coolant crossover from the intake manifold, because it was gonna interfere too much with the supercharger, so I cut that off and I'm using these two pipes, which are 30 millimeter aluminum pipes, that, which fit into the uh, coolant holes real easy. I got these off eBay, and I'll be running these two holes together with a Y, and I'll be using a remote thermostat housing here. Once I Y that hose together, the, the inlet will be here. This hole here is going to be for the bypass holes, which is going to run from right here. This is a bypass hole, and I'm going to run that, I'm going to thread it, put a nipple, and run that hose to that remotely look at thermostats that way you get warm water to the thermostat so it'll open and here's the supercharger removed from the engine and here is the plate just a rectangular piece of uh, aluminum stock a plate that I uh, obviously uh, drilled and bolted on to this supercharger and here's the engine with the supercharger removed this side's iron and uh, I'm going to weld this plate on top of this uh, iron intake manifold. Uh, I did have to cut it some to make room to put on the bolts to the intake manifold to the heads. so that uh, Because once I weld this on, I'm not going to be able to remove it again. And, so, and these holes right here are clearance holes for those bolts that go on that plate there. And so that's what those are for right there. And so let me take this off. Boom, boom. That's why it's heart shaped because of the way the intake manifold is and this is a pontiac 301 intake manifold this is a turbo intake you know the turbo originally mounted right here in the middle of the intake of course i had to cut it for the supercharger the supercharger outlet is more forward here and so i cut all this out as far as i could and kind of uh tapered it out and knife edged it so that it'll be a Nice free-flowing intake. And you can see that these uh, Pontiac 301s have the intake runners Siamese. And that's one of the reasons that uh, these uh, engines are not very popular. Because this is a V8 and they have one runner for two cylinders. 
and so but i did learn that the the turbo intake flows better than the stock two barrel or four barrel intake and uh let me go ahead and show you the difference one of the reasons this intake flows better than the non-boosted intake is because these runners on the turbo intake uh, are, are tapered you know it, they start out nice and thin <laughs> just like the regular manifold but unlike the regular manifold uh, the turbo intake tapers and tends to get wider right after the port and so you got better flowing uh, runners uh, right after the port and so if you look at this uh, naturally aspired intake you can see the runners basically say stay the same volume all the way to the uh, carburetor plenum and uh, of course you do notice that one of the runners is bigger than the rest and that's because of the firing order five and seven fire sequentially one right after the other and so the GM engineers decided to make this runner bigger to flow more air to feed two cylinders basically almost needing to pull air at the same time the other runners can be thin because one cylinder will draw air and then stop and then the next cylinder much later will draw air later so these runners can be thinner and these ones can be thicker for that reason because of the firing order i did port this intake because i want to get maximum flow out of it and uh so these are let me show you the stock ports on this intake yeah. you can see right here it's pretty small except for that one runner that was uh, this one here is pretty wide they made this one big also because the head is reversed but it does get thinner right after the port right here and uh anyway i did port it uh got my die grinder out and ported these quite a bit bigger as big as i can get them without uh making the walls too thin and so i also still need to port the the heads out not this one but this one i'll need to port a little bit wider since i uh since i did uh enlarge the ports on the uh the intake so i'll be doing that pretty soon kind of hard to see i know but i went as deep as i could and I, I really only needed to go about this deep because like I said after that it starts to taper out pretty large after about right here I ported it after right here I didn't need to port it anymore because it gets quite large right here good view of the modified distributor cap I got another video about how to fabricate one of those that way I can clear the obviously the, the carburetor is going to go right above there so I had to fabricate that too and here is the bypass valve i'm going to be using this is a uh, bypass valve from a uh, supercharged mini cooper and that one's going to be arranged right about there and it'll be uh open at idle and closed at full throttle and the purpose of these is so that you know these superchargers they flow more air than the engine needs at idle and so so that you have a very smooth running engine uh you have a bypass valve so as your superchargers pushing a bunch of air down into your lower intake that the engine doesn't need to keep it from revving you know unstable idle your bypass valve, uh, valve will basically allow the excess air to go back up to your carburetor and basically make a loop over and over again so that you can have a nice smooth running engine and so this is not my first rodeo you know this is i've actually done this a few times boosted engines uh turbocharged and supercharged engines some were fuel injected and some were carbureted the one i did right before this one was a uh Ozobel, a 260 Ozobel engine which is a very weak engine that that Ozobel engine only made 110 horsepower uh stock and i basically did the very same thing as i'm doing here i put that same very supercharger onto that engine and i mean man it just really woke up power it did it basically felt like a, a big block engine and uh you know what let me go ahead and show you that uh, engine real quick in case you haven't seen that video 
and I'll show you what I'm talking about. And there it is in my Firebird. This is a uh, the same basic engine, a supercharged Oldsmobile 4.3 liter V8. And it, uh, this is doing almost the same thing over again, except I'm using a serpentine belt. On this one, I did a V-belt setup. I've had this running for about a year now. And uh, it turned this weak engine into a real, <laughs> a real performer. I haven't taken it to the dyno or anything. Uh, I just have too many projects, too much stuff going on. But, uh, I mean, it's just a whole lot more fun to drive. Uh... And there it is. I, I used an Edelbrock carburetor. Uh, on this one, you can see how I arrange that bypass valve. Might be hard, hard to see. Oh, there it is. Got that Mini Cooper supercharged bypass valve, which is open during idle. Close that full throttle. Right below the plenum there. There it is. Hard to see. There it is. This is a daily driver. Take it to work pretty often. Of course, uh, it doesn't quite fit through the hood. I did have to bust a hole through the the hood to get it to fit. Uh, I guess I could have used a cowl induction hood or something with a bubble or something like that. And it would have probably cleared then. Or if it was in a truck or a larger car, it would probably fit without making a hole. But since it's a Firebird, it didn't quite fit. Let me close the hood. And you can see... That's what I had to do to make it fit. So thanks for watching, guys.